Hello world and welcome back to another tutorial all about Britannia where today we're going to be covering a little bit more of the advanced power generation or mana generation flowers that you have with inside the mod. First up before we can actually make some of these intermediate flowers we're going to need to actually create something brand new and that is the runic altar. The runic altar is a way of making 16 different types of runes that are inside of Britannia and this is how you actually make all these other flowers as well as other things. Starting off to actually make the runic altar we're first going to need five living rock and one mana diamond and this is just in a regular workbench but we haven't covered how to actually make a mana diamond in order to make a mana diamond you first need to make get one singular diamond and then throw it into a mana pool with some mana in it here we're just using a creative mana pool for this demonstration last time we showed off how to make a mana pearl in the basics tutorial highly go recommend and check that out but there are a couple of other things we can also make inside of the mana pool. One is using an iron ingot. We can make mana steel. Mana steel can be used for many different things, but today we're just going to be covering the runes. As well as that, you can take any type of dust in the game or any type of dye in the game, and you can make mana powder. So you've got your runing altar, you slap it down, and you don't know what to do now. First, you must supply it with a mana pool or some mana by using a mana spreader. As we have over here, we are just you're going to be using the same creative mana pool. Now just to demonstrate we're going to be showing how to make the water rune here. So to make the water rune you're going to need one of each of these different items here, fishing rod, bone meal, etc etc. Now all we have to do is simply right click these items onto our runic altar. So we place each one of these down over time and then it says now it's going to start actually sending mana to this runic altar. We can see that just over here the there is a green circle going around our wheel. This is basically our bar of telling us how much mana is inside of the runic altar and once it has completely finished we are going to need a couple of different things one is we're going to need to get a block of living rock this is basically going to be the back plate that we're going to print this rune to and then we're also going to need a wand of the forest so first as we see here we got it says that it's completed it needs the living rock and the wand of forest so let's right click here with the living rock that will just place one down then if we take a wand of the forest and we right click on there it will now spit out two of these water runes now I'm not going to be showing off how to make every single one of them, but if we look inside our Lexica Britannia and go to our runes over here, we can see how we make each and every single type. So they are split into sort of three different tiers. The first are four are all elemental. So we have water, we have earth, we have air, and then lastly we have fire. The next four are all based on seasons. So we have spring, we have summer, autumn, and winter as you can see these spring ones or these season ones are going to require two different types of runes already and then the last ones are based off the seven deadly sins there are seven that are obviously based on the seven deadly sins and then there are some other ones as well like the rune of mana uh, which obviously isn't a seven deadly sin but then we have uh, lust gluttony greed sloth wrath envy and pride so there are many different things that you can actually make with these different types of rooms, many different pieces of equipment, some rings, and so on and so forth. But today we're just going to be covering all our mana generation flowers. Now the first advanced mana generation flower we're going to be covering is the Entropinium. I'm going to say this now, I'm going to butcher every single one of these flower names. But this one is essentially going to be an explosive flower. This is going to require one wrath rune, one fire rune, two red petals, two grey petals, and two mystical white petals. Now, as this is obviously a flower, you've got to make this in the petal apothecary. So let's get each one of these items here. Obviously, I'm going to need two of these flowers petals and two red as well. Now, what we do is we just obviously throw each one of these in here over time. Very, very simple stuff. And then, of course, we're going to need our seed. So let's get ourselves a seed to complete this craft. Now I'm going to demonstrate this flower a little bit of the ways away because obviously things can go wrong and things can get very, very messy. Now, of course, you're first going to probably need to wander the forest to set things up and you're going to want to link things all together. So obviously you want to right click on your flower, right click on the matter spreader, then right click on the random spreader and then click on your pool. Now we have a complete system. Now, the way this flower works is, again, it takes in the blast of an explosion and turns that into mana. So if we take a little bit of TNT here and we light it, what's going to happen is it's going to explode, but there isn't going to be any physical damage. No, none of the area is destroyed and we are all safe. Now, as you can see, this is pumping out a lot of mana into this pool here. If we hold the Wand of the Forest 
onto our flower we can see how much it's actually storing inside now it's finished we've got the mana spreader which is obviously slowly pumping that into the mana pool here now there is a couple of things you have to know about the entropy when you actually create an explosion that's all well and good things will be perfectly fine but if there is actually some mana already in the flower and we do this again, something bad's going to happen. And that is the explosion is actually going to take effect, as you see here. The flower has to be completely drained of energy before a new TNT can be placed. So, of course, you can actually automate this in some way uh, by placing down TNT automatically. But just make sure you've got it timed very well. Otherwise, um, your flower and your setup might be blown up. Now, something else to note as well when it comes to this flower is that it likes and says in the book it likes to have organic TNT. What this means is that you have to actually make TNT the old legit way in vanilla. If you use a TNT duplicator, you're going to get a diminishing returns on your mana that you actually get. So if you want more mana, you've got to make it the normal way. Next up, we have the Gormalius. The Gormalius is going to require one red petal, two yellow petals, two light grey petals, a rune of fire, and a rune of summer. Again, thrown all into the apothecary with a seed, and boom, you've got this flower. Now, this Gormalius flower works off giving it food. Different types of food is going to give you different amounts of mana, and also they're going to take longer to eat. But we'll go over that very, very shortly. So over here, I've set something up here. We've got everything set up similarly to how we did over there. We've got our Gormalius linked to a mana spreader, then the mana spreader to a pool. Now, what we do if we throw down this piece of steak here, we can see that it's going to start eating it. it takes a little bit of time, and then afterwards, it's going to actually send that into our pool over here. So it takes up a decent amount. Now, we can feed this any type of food in the game that we want to. So if we give it a melon, it's going to be a little bit quicker, but it's going to give us a little less of its food. Now, how do we know which foods are best to use? Now, the Gourmalius is going to give you mana dependent on the amount of the food gives you saturation. So if you eat a piece of steak, I believe that gives you four of these chicken bones sort of things. So that's going to give you X amount of mana. But also that's going to be sort of the amount of seconds that it takes. So every sort of half bone or something or every full bone is a second. I don't remember exactly, but that's what it says in the book. Here you go. Thus, a steak will take four seconds to digest, an apple will take two, and a loaf of bread will take two and a half seconds and so on because that's how many chicken bones down here is actually gonna you know supply now there is something else to note with this we can give it chicken uh steak and as you can see it's going to give us an x amount of food as you see there it gives us about a third's worth of this bar but if we keep giving it steak something's going to happen you see the gourmelis is a little bit fussy it doesn't like having the same food over and over again so if you keep giving it the same food you're going to get diminishing returns you see here we're getting now only about a quarter and if we keep going more and more it's going to give us less and less and eventually it's going to actually give us nothing now you can automate this with droppers as it dro well, likes to eat things within a three by three block area of it really i don't know if you can throw things all the way over here yep can't do there i'll do there but within the area it works now the best way to actually have this going is you're going to need two different types of food which is why we have melons and we have steak obviously if you wanted to get the most you can out of this you might want to use something like uh, lamb or mutton sorry and a chicken if you wanted to but you can use something like melon slices so if you just give it a melon slice it will eat it quickly then you give it a steak and then you give it a melon slice and then you give it a steak it will then give um sort of keep the bonuses around and uh, you will always get the maximum amount out of each item. Now, I believe the more items you actually give it, the more variety of food it gives you, you're going to get a little bit of a bonus with the amount of different items you give. And obviously, if you have all the different meats, then you're going to get the maximum you can out of this. So you can have this up to pretty much every single different types of food you wanted to in the game. But uh, it might be a bit difficult to fit that all in the 3x3 area. Now, the last thing to note when it comes to the Gourmalius is that when I was throwing in that food there, you may have noticed I wasn't getting anything extra. If I throw in a piece of steak here and then throw in a melon, it actually eats the melon, but nothing actually happens you see the gourmalius can only consume one type of food at a time however it well it will absorb more food so if i drop this and then i start dropping loads of melons all the melons are being disappeared but none of the mana is actually coming from them and also it doesn't think that it's actually eaten them so if you dropped it another steak after giving it loads and loads of melons it won't actually think that it's eaten a melon and you'll get those diminishing returns again so you've got to make sure that when you are setting things up automatically then you're going to want to have everything timed properly moving on now we have the munch dew the munch dew is made using one rune of gluttony 
two lime petals, one green petal, and two red petals. Also, I should say, everyone, that you can actually use the glowing mushroom variants. You don't have to use petals, just with any other craft. Now, the way the Munchtree works is that it actually eats leaves. So this is very good to set up with some sort of tree farm. And if the tree farm is very fast acting, then it's obviously the best you can get. So we're going to have ourselves here. First, let's get into creative here and let's get ourselves some leaves. Over here, we have the Munchtree. Now, the Munchtree has a couple of different mechanics to it. Once it starts eating flower uh, leaves, you want it to constantly eat leaves. Because if you stop, it's going to have to have a little bit of a cool down and actually not eat any more leaves and after a couple of minutes see in here it says it will only eat again after around a minute so you want to however it finishes eating it leaves in a range the monster will take a brief digestion break and then it won't eat anything for about a minute so what you can do is if i just start spamming leaves here we can see that it is actually eating them very very quickly so if it's linked up to the tree farm it'll probably eat all the leaves very very quickly now i can keep growing this and eventually it will stop it won't just eat continuously so you will have to take that minute break over time but just to speed that process up if i stop right clicking here it will then dump everything out and it won't actually start eating leaves again as you see here you're gonna have to wait a minute there there is no sort of visual indication on the flower, but you're going to have to wait a minute before it starts eating everything again. But this has actually given us a fair amount. Now, the only reason that it is going to stop from me constantly spamming down the leaf is because there is obviously an internal buffer to this month's dew. So if you manage to sort of figure out a way, like a perfectly timed way of giving it leaves to the point where it never fully fills up, I don't know if that's possible then you could technically make it eat forever but i think that's very unlikely for you to do so obviously once the munch dew reaches its full capacity inside then um the leaves will stop being eaten and then it'll have to take that minute cool down next up we have the nar slimius now the last Lilius is made using one rune of water, one rune of summer, two lime petals, two green petals, and a black petal. Now the nice Nars Slimius works by actually eating slimes. However, they are only eaten through slimes in a slime chunk. So I have this set up here. If I get ourselves a slime egg here and get out of um, peaceful mode here and place this down, the slime hasn't been eaten nothing has happened if you went to a swamp i'm not sure but i don't think that they would eat the slimes there either because obviously a slime can spawn in the swamp pretty much anywhere this snar slimiest can only eat slimes that are from a actual slime chunk so let's jump into a super flat world to demonstrate so here we are actually in our blood magic world so if you haven't checked out that series i highly recommend you check it out and we have got in here a chunk set up now this chunk i have found it is a slime chunk now there is a way in Britannia to actually find slime chunks but it's slightly more advanced and using things that i have not shown yet but just to show you the item it is called this a bottle in a, sl a slime in a bottle if you actually look at the recipe of this it requires elementium ingots and we have not shown how to actually create this but this involves a basically a big portal you throw mana steel into it and you get elementium back uh, but we're going to be covering that later on in the series so here we have a slime chunk now we know this because of this slime in the bottle in my hand as you can see it's not bouncing if i move in this chunk it starts bouncing that means we're in a slime chunk here which is absolutely wonderful now if i take our sli nar slimius in here now and then let's link this to our mana spreader what we're gonna have to do is first go a little bit of a ways away to uh, actually have slime start spawning in there so for one let's just turn everything off and then let's turn it back on again and things will start actually start spawning in there as you can see now you have to be about 24 blocks away for things to start working but as you can see some are actually appearing and then they disappear when they get a bit, bit too close to the slime basically this nar slimius is gonna basically instantly eat any slimes that get within its sort of range as you can see it's eating it all very very quickly and this is something that can work completely passively if you find a slime chunk you could probably dig it out give yourself loads of different layers as if you would to have a regular slime farm and then just slap a load of these on top of your different platforms and this will give you loads of passive mana over time moving on now back in our botania world we have got the rosa arcana this is going to require one rune of mana one lime petal two pink petals and two purple petals and this is a flower that is going to actually make mana from xp so as we have here everything's linked up just as we have before and if i throw this bottle of enchanting here we can see that it's going to actually start creating mana now this is actually going to also not just take mana that is in the 
area, it's also going to take mana from your own experience bar. So you don't really want to be too close if you want to keep a hold of the mana. Um, so be careful of that and just be aware. But probably the best way to actually have this is have it set up next to some sort of mob farm or some sort of farm that's going to give you experience over time. Or there's many different ways you could do it in modded, but essentially it give, give it XP, it will give you mana. Now the very last one is the Thermalily. The Thermalily is going to require the Rune of Fire, the Rune of Earth, one red petal and two orange petals. Now this is going to make mana from lava. So if we get ourselves a bucket of lava here, this works very very similar to our Hydrogenous from the previous tutorial. Now this is only going to take lava, one source block of lava well, that's on the same level as it, on the same Y level. So if I just right click this in here, it's now eaten up that lava and it's going to now create mana constantly for 45 seconds. After 45 seconds, there is going to be a couple of minutes delay before it's actually going to eat its next one and start creating some more mana. Here it says that obviously it's going to take, uh, take it 45 minutes, but then it's going to need a five minute cooldown. Now, something you have to actually worry about here is that oh, I can have another bit of lava here. We could have a dropper or a placer or something automatically place lava in here, but something is going to happen. You can't have this place down straight away as after 45 seconds, this thermalily is going to sort of burn out. As you can see there, it's just burned out. It's been the 45 seconds and we have this little bit of sort of steam here. This is basically, it's now going to need to cool down. As you can see, the lava's disappeared. It has eaten that lava source up, but it hasn't actually created more lava. And I can keep, keep placing more down, but it's not actually going to be, you know, making any more mana. And every time I do place this lava down, it's going to reset the five minute cooldown. So you want to fully wait the full five minutes, otherwise you're wasting all this lava. Now, of course, there isn't really a way of fully automating this as obviously you need to probably collect a load of lava, attach a tank to this in some sort of way and then place it down. So you can only sort of semi automate this and you have to, um, you know, get lava over time. But obviously, if you have a mod that has cross dimensional lava transportation, you could probably make up some sort of pumping system from the nether for this. Now for now that is all the advanced flowers for generating mana however there are actually a couple more uh, if we go into the generating flora there is one two three for five more different types of flowers that can generate you things however they're going to require some more advanced items such as uh, the Gaia spirits and I believe pixie dust so those we're going to be covering in later tutorials but for now that is going to be everything in this episode but if you did enjoy and this video helped you out in any way shape or form please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe that would really help me out and ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live because next time we're going to be covering since we've gone over all the power generation ones today we're going to cover all of the functional flora in the next episode but until next time guys Take care.